Okay, this is being recorded. Okay. Got it. All right, so let's go. Um, so today's topic is basically, we want to give an introduction. Uh, I, I, okay, let's not say introduction, an awareness about yeah. wills and power of attorney. So um, my name is Prabha, Prabha Pillai. I'm the founder and director of willsmalaysia.my. So this is a company I created mainly to offer the services uh, for writing of wills and power of attorney. And uh, the, the goal is uh, definitely to present it to the general public at a much lower and cheaper price as well as uh, the, the comfort of getting it done all from home. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but before we start, um, that's me. I would also like to introduce Padma, who I've uh, partnered with from a legal aspect. Uh, probably, uh, Padma, I'll give you, uh, maybe you can take two seconds to introduce yourselves. Sorry, I think Padma just uh, went MIA on us. Padma, you there? Okay. We'll let Padma jump in again. A a anyway, um, Patma is, um, he has, he's from Mrs. Patma Raj Ramasamy and Co, uh, a legal firm uh, established in Kuala Lumpur. So I've partnered with Patma on the legal aspects of it to create quite a number of legal products that uh, we are offering to the Malaysian public. So anyway, before we get deep into the, into, um, the presentation, I just want to take a minute to thank you uh, for the opportunity yeah. to Ms. Amaravadi, as well as uh, Mr. Mahendra Nathan, uh, to make this uh, presentation possible um, so that we can um, give you some awareness of what wills, the importance of wills and power of attorney is. So very briefly, the agenda is basically going to be um, a brief introduction of Wills Malaysia and then we'll talk about last will and testament. And um, then we'll pause for some questions if there's any. Then we'll talk about power of attorney. And again, we'll pause for some question. And um, I think mainly you'll be interested to know about a cost to write a will and a power of attorney. And we'll give you some contact information if you want to get more information regarding uh, the services we offer, as well as some discounts that we can offer for you to um, join and uh, purchase uh, the products that we have. And then we'll close it off with some questions uh, if there's any uh, um, for this whole session. Um, the whole Presentation will take like about 20, 25 minutes, nothing more. I don't plan to keep you all more than uh, half an hour in this uh, Saturday morning um, so that you can enjoy a weekend uh, staying at home. <laughs> but uh, at least, you know, uh, we'll, we'll give you back um, uh, so some, a lot of time in the, in the day. So quickly about us, we uh, launched in Malaysia just over a year now in July of last year. And our, we have quite a number of products, but the core flagship product is My Last Will and My POA. My Last Will is to basically write uh, wills and My POA is basically to uh, create the power of attorney. So we have created a software that we call wizards. So basically these wizards are the smart kind of wizard that when you go through a series of questions and based on the answers, it formulates and creates your legal will as well as your power of attorney. So the unique part of our will, our product, our services is that you can take up to one year to basically try it out. And when you are absolutely comfortable is when you purchase it. So honestly, we are not aware of any other service in Malaysia that provides free trial up to one year. So which is what I want to talk to you about on the awareness of will. But quickly, let's take a look at what our vision is. Something simply put together that we want all Malaysians to be able to have a will without a fuss. What I mean by without a fuss means to make it easier for people to have a will. Because from this is creation of will is something personal to me. I will address it at somewhere along this uh, presentation as well. 
uh, it's near and dear to my heart on why I ventured into this business, but I will, I will let you know. Our mission is basically to create awareness, talking about the importance of a will and uh, especially giving it to everyone at a much more affordable price or cost. So if you would ask me, what are we selling? We are just selling a blueprint for a better tomorrow. So that is our goal. So some facts, just let's look at some facts before we dwell into the wills in Malaysia. Reported in 2016, we have some 60 billion ringgit of unclaimed estates since the independence. So we are talking like billions of ringgit that is now caught up in the courts, partly because the people who are left the estate do not have a will, or they are all ended up being contested in the courts. So another reason to think about why we need a will. Let's look at another fact. In 2018, more recently, it has been reported that only 28% of Malaysian workers have a will. Is this a far cry from other developed countries where there's at least 40 to 55% have will, but it's okay, we don't talk about other countries. It's only for comparison to see that most developed countries understand the importance of a will, so they work towards the will. But Malaysia is not there yet. So that is why I'm on a roadshow to basically create awareness for people to understand, hey, the will is important in your life. So, in a nutshell, let's look at it. What is a will? So, according to Malaysian Wills Act 1959, it's de it defines as a declaration of your intention. So, if you write a will, you are known as the testator. Your declaration of your intention concerning property, any other matters that be basically you want to be effective after your death. So again, in short, your will allows you to speak after you have passed away. So I apologize if talking about passing away and that is a taboo subject, but I have over the years overcome this and I want to speak openly about people dying because that's a fact, right? They, those are the facts. You cannot avoid that as part of your life. Once you're born, you are just sticking away until we die. So we might as well get prepared for it, especially not for us dying, but for those that we are leaving behind. Again, as I mentioned, this is very near and dear and personal to me. But let's understand why will. There's many reasons you want to write a will. But if not, if you can't think of all, I'm going to give you at least three reasons. So let's start about you must at least name your executor. So what I mean by executor is you are going to name someone to run with your estate. And what I mean by estate is what you are leaving behind, your properties, your bank accounts, your financial records, your car, your motorbikes, everything is considered your estate once you have passed away. So at least you have to name your executor. And to me, this is very important guardians for your children, especially in cases whereby, you know, husband and wife out in the highway and then they meet an accident, both of them die. The young children happen to be visiting the grandparents. They are now suddenly left with no parents. Now, I know part of our culture, we take it for granted. Sometimes we assume, oh, my mother will take care. Oh, my brother will take care. Oh, my sister will take care. I think let's not assume, which is why I'm a strong believer of no assumption. I want to make sure that if I were to die and my wife were to die together, and if I have young children, I must make sure that they are taken care of. And how can I take, how can I make sure of it? So that my uncle who suddenly, who has not been talking with the family for 10 years, suddenly comes into the family, says, hey, I want to take care of my, of the my kids. So we can avoid a lot of family squabbles, family uh, uh, potential quarrels, just by us clearly <coughs> defining it in your will. Thirdly, if not all, is a distribution plan. So you decide 
who receives what including your possessions and sums of money so that is very clearly laid out so let's uh, look at two scenarios right let's one scenario what happens if you were to die without a will the second scenario is how your i mean it's not what what happens to you when you die without a will you are gone now we are talking about who you leave behind your loved ones what will happen to them when you die with a will or when you die without a will let's take a quick look so we ask the question do you have a will and if your answer is no what happens when you die without a will step 1 your next of kin so your next of kin is the person that is going to be running the show after you have left could be your brother your sister your uncle whoever it is your next of kin has to apply for la la is letter of administration from the high court to appoint an administrator then the next of kin has to seek and compile the deceased assets information and documentation because remember nobody knows because you suddenly the person has passed away who knows what he has how many houses how many cars how many bank accounts what company he has what shares he has there's a long list of uh, assets that you may leave behind but nobody knows so the next kin next of kin must start looking investigating and compiling so that they have to carry out all the self investigation of the deceased assets and debts next of kin has to obtain the letter of administration from the high court next of kin has to be admitted as an administrator and the administrator to realize the deceased assets because it's the requirement by law under section 62 of the probate and admin act 1959 that they have to prepare a complete estate account and lastly i'm already tired just looking at this process administrator to distribute assets according to either the distribution act or the family arrangement in this case after you're going through all of these uh, hoops that you need to jump look at that em emojis by the end at the end of it you will be frustrated and why am i saying so because i have personal experience which i will share with you later on i went through this process it's a headache it's been 6 years that i am i was going through this process so i will share with you my experience on what happened however if you have a will and what happens when you die with a will your appointed executor will administer the estate according to your will in this case your executor will apply for a grant of probate so it's not the letter of administration in this case a grant of probate and your appointed executor will basically distribute the estate according to your will because you already have a clear instructions prepared and your executor knows what are you thinking what were you thinking before you left before you passed on that now they have that paper in hand and they have the order from the court now they can go close all your bank accounts and they can go and then move change the name of this house to your maybe your wife or your sister whoever that you have appointed for so that makes it much easier believe me i have i i definitely oversimplified it just to show that it is much more easier as compared to without a will um but the process is a much more breathing exercise so at this juncture i'm just going to take 2 seconds and ask the question before we move on if there's any question at this juncture regarding the will just so i can take a quick sip of water okay no problem um what we can do next is let's quickly tackle what is the power of attorney okay it's basically a legal document okay and you create a legal document and whereby you grant authority to someone the person that you appoint as your attorney to act on your behalf and there's various reasons that you can create a power of attorney what it does is your power of attorney speaks for you while you are still around you see the difference with a will it speaks for you once you are no longer around but then this speaks for you while you are still around 
Now, as I mentioned, there are various reasons that people create power of attorney, but at Wills Malaysia, me and Patma, we worked only focusing on three types of power of attorney. So let's talk about the three types of power of attorney. First one is regarding financial interest. So power of attorney for financial interest. That has got to do with the property, your bank account, anything related to finance. I'll give you an example. Like say you have properties. You have one house, two house, however many houses, but you live overseas, yes. Yes. right? So in this case, you can actually create a power of attorney. You can assign someone the power to basically, maybe you live overseas, you, have, you cannot come back, but you want to sell your house. So you know what? A good example is during this COVID period. People who are stuck overseas coming back to Malaysia is a big no-no. And if they come, they got to go through all of this quarantine and everything. So let's not talk about that. Assuming a situation like this, if you have a power of attorney and you want to sell your house, it can be done. In this case, you give it to uh, whoever you appoint and that person is able to sell your house. This is just one example, um, but this is uh, power of attorney for financial interest. The second type of power of attorney is talking about business interest. So you have business, maybe one business or two business, or a couple of businesses that you are, you are running, but you either you don't have the time or you don't have an expertise to basically run the show. So maybe you only have time for two business, but a third business, again, you really don't have time. So you give it to someone to basically manage and they have the authority to run the business end to end. You, you give them full power to take care of that business. And another good example is again, if you are overseas or you are unable to uh, respond in time or what, that person can actually run the show for you with, without any hiccups, legally speaking. So that's uh, something good to have. Thirdly, which to me is a very important uh, power of attorney is for your healthcare interests. Now we all want to live a healthy life, but we don't have control over our longevity, but we do have control over our health. However, you can meet an accident, you can end up in a coma, or worst case, you can be mentally unstable. A lot of people are under pressure and you, you, you have heard all these stories now during COVID and, and prior to that, or even for however many years, mental um, health is a real issue. People can actually lose their mind. When we say lose their mind, we, we easily, we just say the word gila, but it's not gila, it's a real mental problem. And they, they are people too, right? So if they end up incapacitated like in a coma or they're mentally unstable, who is going to decide what happens to them from a healthcare pers perspective? Who is going to decide when the doctor says, hey, I have to operate on this guy. This is option A, this is option B. Who's going to pick A or B? And then the doctor say, I'm going to give you all this medication. Who's going to say, okay, give it. Or the doctor, or you are having doubt about the doctor. Say, I want a second opinion. Who's going to make all the decision for you? We assume husband, the wife will make. We assume the wife, the husband will make. If not, the older son will make. If not, the daughter, that's our lifestyle. We assume things, but you need to take control of your life. So you, while you are in good health, you already tell, in case I become like this, I want this person and this person only to make decisions on my behalf. Again, we avoid all that family squabble. We avoid all of that drama. Sorry to use the word drama, but we avoid all of those. We don't want that. So let's give people, our family, our loved ones, a much more easier life going forward, whether we are there or not. In this case, we have become mentally unstable. So again, our product here is there's no legal jargons, very simple questions. Within 20 minutes, you can easily create a power of attorney. And we are proud to say that we are the first, Wills Malaysia is the first company in Malaysia to offer power of attorney services online. So it's a little different from the will. The will is you can create it online, 
you can print it out and then as long as you sign it in front of two witnesses and the witnesses sign in front of you it's a legal document pack it up and you keep it it's a legal document but power of attorney you need to go a little further once you have created it you need to sit in front of a lawyer and that's where patma and his team comes in sit in front of the lawyer and you got to attest do some attestation pay some regulatory fees get it registered in the high court and then it becomes a legal document but the first part of it whereby you usually go and sit with a lawyer and then ask them to create the power of attorney for you we took that part away and that is why we made it online so that it becomes so much more cheaper that you can create it at home print it out go and meet the lawyer just do the last few steps at the lawyer which reduces your cost so so much at this juncture i'm going to take a sip of water and open up to any questions you may have um just checking much. if uh, patma are you are you back patma okay patma is not here but i'll i'll try to answer some question sure prabha basic can i can i ask you can i just jump in sure please do okay now if you i'm talking the question of a will if you have a will written up and if you want to change the contents of the will at any point in time is it possible is it possible yes it's possible i will be addressing that in the next few slides uh prabha can you hear me yes i can hi patma okay i've been trying to say hi the for the i think i don't know how many times but i kept on not hearing okay yeah uh right uh i think the question just now was can i override a will with the next right can i with change, the newer will and can i change the contents of the will at any point in time can 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 the last your last particular will will be the will that is uh referred to in the court that means the last existing the last existing the last one will override the previous one that's how it works yeah, and then so if i make it today like 6 months down the road i make a new will right the new will will take precedence that's a law and i must go through the same due process of getting the witnesses to sign and all that Even yes so long yeah, so long as it uh, has the witnesses requirement uh and all then it's still valid it has to be a valid will i think regarding the valid will and all prabha will go through it once more are you with me yeah. prabha ah, yes yeah. yes yeah so uh i i will address the question that you asked there mr okay, mind runner then i think let's yeah. let prabha you finish up first prabha then we'll come up with sure that. sure not a problem but i i i have a slide just to talk about that one but okay. let's uh let's proceed yeah. the 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 next section that i want to talk about is basically the cost but before we talk about a cost before we tell you what we are offering i just want you to think about when to update your last will and testament and this is exactly what uh, my mind ranadan was asking just now so when to update your last will and test testament so most people most people think that updating your uh, or creating a will is a one time task i'm here to tell you that is not the case will is at every life event what i mean by life event what do what are we calling what is a life event marriage divorce children death many other critical life events can happen to you over your lifetime so what if your beneficiary dies before you i mean okay. it has happened right okay. there could be changes in your business life in your financial situation your executor situation change your suddenly your your brother call up and say hey bro i cannot be your executor i i please find someone else then your your whole will is now null and void it, it it doesn't mean anything anymore you bought and you sold properties you've changed so many times so what if you are one of those people um paid a lawyer patma will all do respect to patma he is a lawyer but he understands what i am talking about if you paid hundreds or maybe thousands of ringgit to prepare your will and then one of these situations here happen and then you go back mr lawyer i need to update my will because now my executor uh, don't want to be my so mr lawyer will say yes of course i can not a problem but ding this is your fee then 2 years later you you happen to get divorce or something happen that you need to change your will oh then mr lawyer i need to update my will ding this is another will this is another 
will. So that is off, up, over and over again. It you got to keep paying the lawyer. Yes, you can make it, but you got to keep paying the lawyer. So how long is that valid? A few months or a few years. So reviewing your will, my our recommendation from our experience is at least once a year, you got to take out your will and you got to review your will. Is this still valid? Have I all that I have stated here is this still makes sense on this year? Maybe on your birthday, maybe on New Year's Day, doesn't matter. You choose, but please choose one day. So my last thing that I would say is updating your will is not a one-time task. It is an ongoing task. So at this juncture, I just want to take and share something personal that happened to me, which triggered this whole business. The person you see here is my brother. His name is Ganesan. <laughs> the one to his right is my daughter and the left is my niece. But uh, anyway, this picture was taken like seven years ago. The girls are all grown up now. But what I want to say is my brother in March of 2015, he went to bed and the next day he did not wake up. So that was the end of his life. He was 49 years old. I want to repeat, four, nine. He was 49 years old. He died. He was my executor of my will. So there goes my will. But the, he himself didn't have a will. Like many Malaysians, hey, I'm only 49. Why do I need a will? I'll think about it when I'm 60 years old. No, 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 no. That is uh, not the right attitude. The moment you are on your feet, <coughs> your 20s, your 30s, you have a family, you have a job, start thinking about a will. And that's the right attitude. So my brother's experience, he passed on six years. He died without a will. Six years later, only early this year, we finally got his property transferred to the, league, to the other person's name. Only this year, six years later. So I had a very bad experience. And of course, the experience was compounded with all this COVID and all this other stuff that happened. However, we had to go through the uh, LA, go through uh, discovery, learning experience, what the heck <coughs> is all of this? Which is why when I shared that, that different uh, slides just now, that was uh, what triggered me to say that, hey, there are many people like me. I've spoken to many people after that and realized a lot of people don't have a will and they just take for granted either they're going to live forever or it won't happen to me. So anyway, <clears throat> that, which is what I meant earlier on, this is personal to me. So I'm actually on a crusade to trying to educate the people, our Indian people as well, because a lot of our community people take things for granted. I'm going to be upfront. I'm a Malaysian Indian myself. So telling this, I have no shame. A lot of people in my family also don't have a will. Say, I will think about it later on. So it's always assumed that we'll be fine until it isn't. So coming back to the cost, if you do a simple Google search, how much does it cost to write a will in Malaysia? This was done in uh, in uh, google.com.my. It's anywhere if you use a lawyer between 1500 ringgit to 8000 ringgit, depending on the complexity of the will. But you can see how expensive it can get. And there are three types of uh, way we can write will. One, we do it online. Or two, we get a lawyer to write a will. Or thirdly, you talk to one of these uh, will writers like uh, Rock Wales and all of those guys. So what we have done here at Wills Malaysia is we took the will writers activities and we converted that into computer program. So you don't need a will writer to come and sit in your house and ask you all that question and you answer all that question and they go and prepare a, bill, a whole will and then they say, they charge you a few thousand dollars just because they can prepare the will. We are doing it everything online. So our fees for a single will is 269 only. And um, the others, uh, the first column is Wills Malaysia. 
The others are some of the comp competitors, which I will not be talking about, but it, just as a comparison, I'm giving, I'm showing here to say that how the fees compare. And we also have a spouse will. So when you, as the main person creates a will, you can get a spouse will for 40% off. So it's only 161 if you create a spouse will. Our power of attorney starts at 349 plus the legal, um, uh, the, all the, the stamp duty, the registration fee, stamping in uh, what you call that, you need to get it re registered in the high court and our lawyer attestation fee, it all comes up to about 550 ringgit for one will, uh, sorry, for one power, power of attorney. And we can go up to three power of attorney, like the ones that I explained just now. And if you take more than one, definitely you get discount on the second one, you get discount on your third one. But we also offer lifetime custodial. Again, what does will custodial means? So you have written your will, you have this paper all signed up, but then you got to keep it safe, right? Flood, fire, robbery, so many things can happen or you just misplace the whole will. Uh, what, we, what we offer is you pay a one-time fee, just a one-time fee of 330. You send it after you signing and all, you send it to our lawyers and we will safeguard that will for you. Each time you update it, send it to us. There's no extra charge. You pay once, we'll take care of it for a lifetime. So when things happen, when you pass on, your executor or your next of kin will contact us and we will uh, hand over the will to you. So basically it's safeguarding it. And all the other services, this is the one that I was talking about, the will subsequent updates is free because you're doing it online. You go and update your will every year, every month, every now and then, whenever you think, I just bought a house. Okay, what, what I need to do? Yes, I need to update my will. So you log on to Wills Malaysia, you go there, okay, I already bought this house. Now this house is under my name. In case I were to die, I want to give this house to my daughter. So plop, 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 put it there, print out your will, maybe at the end of the year or whenever, and then get it signed again and you are good. So that's a feature. And we also offer all of this for free. Funeral wishes, we have a document that is already there. Organ donation, email parting wishes. Email parting wishes is a feature that we have in the system whereby if you were to pass on, you can already pre-write emails, pre-written emails to whoever you want, how many people you want. You can write pre-written your farewell message, your goodbye message. You can pre-write that. And then once you have passed on, your executor or somebody that you are going to name will go into the system and click one button. And that's all they're able to see. They can only need to click one button and that email will be blasted out to whoever you have written. They will all get your message. So not only email, you can video record and attach it to your message as well. All of these services are free. Part of it, pet trust. We have the features of pet trust. You can even get your uh, will to be reviewed by our lawyer. We have various discounts, family discount, military and police discount, senior discount. If you're more than 65, you get 30% off Yes. 30% off, we have other services called print and ship. If you don't have a printer, we can print it for you, bind it for you, and we can send it to your house. But of course, right now that services is suspended due to COVID. And then we have one that is called executor list. Executor list is the one that I was talking to you about is that, you see nowadays we have so many um, accounts bank account, we have online accounts, we have uh, uh, financial services, you have your own doctor, you have a list of the uh, lawyers, you have your insurance, you have your EPF, you have your so many things you build up over your lifetime that you have some document in your drawer that shows what is this, like some of the benefits in your company, your HR benefits that your family may not even know if you are dead, your, if your family do not go and knock on the door of HR if, where he was working and say, he is due 10,000 ringgit when he dies, they, they will, okay, no company is going to volunteer and give you money unless you go and ask for it. So all of this, we have a service whereby you can compile all of this into one document. And then 
that document can be given to your executor and your executor will suddenly have all the information he or she needs to run with. We have wallet cards, document storage, membership services, and even gift certificates. Gift certificates that uh, you can buy uh, a membership service for your friend or your daughter and ask them to also uh, create a will. So again, let's talk about lawyers. In Malaysia, or at least the time that we did some research, some of the lawyers' charges for all of these are between 500 to 1400 ringgit, depending on the lawyer you talk to and depending on the complexity of your will. Now, as I said, Wills Malaysia, however complex your will is, the system is able to manage it. But if there is really complicated will, that is where our lawyers can step in and they can assist you. You can do a will review with our lawyers and then they will help you to uh, navigate and get your will properly documented. This is the charges of the lawyers. So it's uh, coming to an end, this session that uh, we have booked today. Um, just a quickly, 10 reasons why you want to choose Wills Malaysia is because it is a lawyer approved online service. Not just a lawyer, so it's not just Patma approved this, we have, we have gone through, we have shared the system with many, many lawyers. Patma's firm have tied up with all, with quite a number of lawyers across the major cities in Malaysia whereby we can work with. And then it's the most comprehensive service in the market. We have simple step-by-step -step instructions. Your audio, uh... oh yeah. Prabha, your audio, Prabha. You can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we uh, yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can. It Sorry. suddenly went on mute. Okay. I think that's a hint. Is that not? No, no, no. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but Accident. anyway, yeah. <laughs> Coming to it, uh, it uses very plain and simple language. The reason we say plain and simple language is because nobody wants to deal with legal wordings. Nobody, because only lawyers understand legal wordings. I don't. I'll be the first to admit, which is why I have Padma. He will read the lawyers. He will advise me. So, and then I, again, I was saying, save hundreds of ringgit in legal fees. And you can update unlimited free of charge updates. It complies to our Malaysia Wills Act 1959. Our power of attorney complies to the Power of Attorney Act 1949. And it's free to try all from the comfort of your home. This is why we say choose Wills Malaysia. So for today, for um, more information,